This is Apollo Control at 54 hours, 6 minutes. Apollo 11's distance from Earth now is 172,748 nautical miles, traveling at a velocity of 3,260 feet per second.
Houston, Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Hello, Houston, go ahead. Uh, Roger, 11, as uh, you've probably noticed, your coning angle in PTC mode is uh, increased substantially as a result of the uh, wastewater dump, the fuel cell purge, and uh, natural coupling. So it looks like uh, we're going to have to terminate PTC here in a little while. And uh, we'd like to get your feeling as to whether you're still anticipating uh, trying to send back TV signals from inside the LEM. And if so, uh, we'll try to provide an attitude that uh, you can hold that will give us high gain antenna lock uh, on the earth during the uh, TV and limb activation period. Over. Hello, Houston, go Houston, over. Go ahead, Houston. 
Roger, we have a TV attitude for you if you're ready to copy. Go ahead, ready to copy. Okay, we recommend uh, stopping PTC at GET of 544500, and this should put you at just about the right roll angle. Uh, the attitude we recommend is roll 263, pitch 090, zero, zero, yaw 000. Zero, zero. Uh, this gives you the earth out of window number one in the command module and places the high gain antenna uh, and the CSM window for TV uh, at your convenience. Uh, you will also have the sun shining in uh, or shining at the hatch on the limb and if you take down the window shade you should get some sunlight in. Uh, we're recommending wide dead band. Over. We'd like you to stop at the proper roll angle, then do a vert 49 to the rolling pitch, over. Or correction, rolling y'all. Houston, you read over. Houston, Apollo 11, over. 
Roger, 11, do you read me over? Hello, Apollo 11, Houston, over. Stand by, Charlie. Uh, we're going to come out of PTC here at uh, 263 roll and then do a burp 49 uh, to the uh, recommended attitude. That sounds fine to us, over. This is Apollo Control at 54 hours, 45 minutes. Apollo 11 is 173,997 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 3,234 feet per second. In the control center, uh, the white team led by Gene Kranz is preparing to relieve Cliff Charlesworth and the green team. Capcom is uh, Charlie Duke. We're estimating the change of shift news conference for 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Hello, Apollo 11, Houston. Before you open the pressure equalization valve, we'd like a LAM CM Delta P over. Okay, uh, let me check it again. It was about 155. Roger. I read it uh, 158 right now, Charlie. Roger, thank you much.
Houston, Apollo 11, how do you read on the high game? Uh, 11, how do you read me, over? Reading you loud and clear, Charlie. We just switched to the high gain, and we've stopped PTC at roll 263, pitch 90, yard zero. How do you read? Roger, Mike. You're five by now on the high gain. Uh, we right between the Omni antennas and pretty uh, horrible calm on the Omnis. We got you five by on the high gain, and we copy the PTC stoppage. Over. Okay, fine. Houston, we're going to open the direct O2 valve and start pumping up the cabin. Roger, copy. Apollo 11, Houston, we're going to hand over to Goldstone for uplink in about two minutes. We might have a momentary dropout of comm, over. All righty. Can you hear our master alarm in the background? That's O2 flow high coming through this amplifier. Roger, copy. That photoelectric cell is a good device. It's worked very well. Uh, 11, Houston, say again, over. I say that photoelectric cell amplifier for the master alarm is a good device. It's working very well, and it's a nice, pleasing tone. All right, copy. Thank you. Makes you almost glad to get master alarm. Houston Apollo 11, as a matter of curiosity, our O2 flow meter is pegged uh, full scale high. Roger 11, we copy that here, over. Okay. So that transducer is working somewhat. Roger. 11, Houston, we'd like to try to attempt to correlate your uh, O2 flow in transducer with the uh, uh, the flow valve that you got open, how far, how far open would you say you have the uh, repress O2 over? I'm correcting the direct O2. Uh, stand by, Charlie. Okay, Charlie, it's not open very far. It's uh, hard to give you a good reading without shutting it again, but the arrow is about at the 1 o'clock position. Now, uh, I reduced the flow and I'll let it stabilize here. Right now, our onboard reading is about uh, 0.4, and that's with the uh, arrow on the O2 valve at the 2 o'clock position. Would you rather have uh, comparisons of O2 flow readings, or would you rather have valve position comparisons? 
Roger. Stand by. Uh, Ecom say so they'd like to look at uh, uh, valve positions. Over. Okay. Well, we're holding uh, steady now at three tenths of a pound per hour, and our cabin pressure is uh, about five four. And uh, I'll uh, close the valve momentarily, and then open it again to this position and tell you how much travel is required. Roger. About 30 degrees of travel, Charlie, from the closed position, which is with the arrow pointing at about uh, 3 to 3.30, 4 o'clock. Roger. Our flow is stabilized now at uh, 0.6. Roger, we copy. We're reading the same. Okay. Yeah, hold it back to the one o'clock position. Right. That's a good, good enough. We are satisfied now. Over. Okay.
Houston to Apollo 11. We've uh, terminated the direct O2. Our cabin pressure is 5.7. And as a matter of curiosity, when we turn the direct O2 valve off, we get a master alarm just like they did in the spacecraft testing. Roger. 11, Houston, we have a little update for you. When you go into the limb, we'd like you to unstow and bring back to the command module the following items. Over. Ready to copy. Roger. We'd like you to pick up the, out of the flight data file, the surface checklist, the mission rules, no-go card, the dip, app, RCS limit cue card. Over. Apollo 11 Houston, the reason we wanted you to bring those three items back, we'll have some updates uh, for you for those three, over. Roger, we figured you would.
This is Apollo Control at uh, 55 hours, 10 minutes. Uh, our network controller has just advised that we are receiving live television at uh, Goldstone. Uh, we would presume this is a test of the system similar to what we received from the crew yesterday. Uh, the crew is planning to send television from the lunar module when they ingress. Apollo uh, 11, Houston, we're getting the TV at Goldstone. Call for, uh, to we're the crew. not quite configured here at Houston for the transmission. Uh, we'll be up in a couple of minutes, over. Capcom Charlie Duke uh, advising the crew that we're not uh, quite prepared for television reception at this time. You heard Mike call and respond that uh, this one's for free. Uh, we still intend to get the television transmission uh, during the time the crew is in the lunar module beginning at about 56 hours 20 minutes uh, ground elapsed time, which would be about 4.52 p.m. Central Daylight Time. getting a black and white television picture uh, in the uh, control center at this time. We should have that in color by now. Interior view of the command module looking up into the uh, LAM hatch, uh, CSM LAM hatch area. We can't quite make out uh, which crewmen we're seeing up in the tunnel working with the uh, probe and drogue assembly. Getting a very good view of the work going on in the uh, command and service module tunnel. Uh, that appears to be uh, Neil Armstrong, 
working in the uh, in the tunnel, uh, operating, working on the uh, drogue and uh, probe assembly. This extremely sharp, clear picture is uh, coming to us from about 175,000 miles distance from Earth, uh, presently about 48,000 miles from the moon. appears uh, as if it might be all the uh, free TV, as Mike Collins put it, uh, forgetting we do, in, do expect to get uh, the television transmission from the time the crew is in the lunar module. And uh, that uh, period of activity is scheduled to begin at about 56 hours, 20 minutes with the uh, ingress to the lunar module. Now we are start starting to get a picture back again, losing lock momentarily, and now we have it back again. Neil Armstrong up in the tunnel at this point, removing the uh, probe and drogue assembly in preparation for the ingress to the lunar module. Controller just reported that uh, this television is coming to us on the 210 foot dish antenna at Goldstone, California.
we just saw the uh, probe assembly uh, start to come loose now as Neil Armstrong is Apollo uh... 11, he says pretty good show here. It looks like he almost got the probe out. Yeah, it's moving now. Did you see that? Right, Neil's really good. Not much light up in that area, but uh, apparently it's, uh, it's, 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 it's,
11 Houston looks like it's pretty crowded in there with that grove over. Well, it's not crowded. really bad. This uh, TV cable is getting in the way. We see lots of arms. This uh, unscheduled television transmission has now run about 18 minutes, and we have no estimate at this point as to how long it will continue. Uh, Mike, Mike Collins reported that it would, uh, we would go ahead with a regularly scheduled one when they are in the LEM. Apollo 11, Houston, do you have a little white dot in the bottom of your monitor, on the TV monitor, over? Uh, Roger, we do. Roger, I guess part of the camera's uh, been burned out down there. These are really beautiful pictures now, Buzz, over. Real clear. Okay, we might have got just a little bit of sun in there. Is it just uh, one small white dot? That's primitive. view here of the computer uh, display and keyboard assembly with the green lights flashing. We went up in the uh, tunnel checking the roll angle, Charlie, and it's 2.05 degrees. Try to copy 2.05 on the roll cal. And that's a plus. Roger, plus. to the roll cal or roll calibration uh, index marker in the tunnel which shows how far off uh, exact uh, zero the uh, two vehicles were when the docking occurred. 11 Houston, the tunnel looks pretty clear to us. Somebody going up there now. Over. Uh, it's Mike uh, checking his uh, connectors up there now. Right. 11 Houston, the lighting up in there looks very good to us at this time, over. I think that's mostly the camera. It, uh, it's subdued to say the least. Roger, it's, uh, pretty, it's gathering pretty well to us. Uh, we see everything quite clearly up in there.
the docking latches look good today, just like they did yesterday. Everything up in there looks just fine. That sounds fine to us, over. Mike Collins reporting there on the appearance of the docking latches. Houston, we can even read the decals up there on the limb hatch. Uh, let me zoom it up and uh, see how much you can read. Okay. We can see the uh, Lamb umbilical connection quite well there, but you see you're zooming in on one of the decals now that uh, to reset, unlatch handle, latch behind uh, grip and pull back two full strokes. That's about all we can make out. Hey, you got an A+. Plus. Thank you very much, sir. At least I passed my eye test. I'm standing six feet from it, Charlie, and you can read it better than I can. There's something wrong with the system. An interested uh, observer of these amazingly clear pictures coming to us from more than 175,000 miles out in space is astronaut Gene Cernan, who got a first-hand view of some of this uh, same area of the spacecraft during uh, his Apollo 10 flight. View of the uh, mem hatch handle there. Eleven over. Roger. Looks like we'll be ready to uh, go into the lamp early uh, if that's okay with y'all down there. Roger, it's fine with us, Neil. Go ahead anytime you wish. Over. In Houston, the white spot you see on your monitor, our TV people say it is a burn spot, but they expect it to dissipate after a couple hours, over. Roger, thank you.
Okay, the uh, dump valve is actuated. Roger, copy, Lemon, we see that very clearly. Is that uh, you, Buzz, with your hand on it? Yeah. Houston, we're really amazed at the quality of the picture up in the tunnel. It's uh, really superb, over. It is considering the amount of light up in there. Roger, we're about to open the hatch now. Right. There's that same guy that when you open up the door, why he's waiting halfway and he turns the lights on. How about that? It's like the refrigerator. That conversation between Charlie Duke and uh, Mike Collins referring to the automatic light that comes on in the uh, LEM when the hatch is open. Buzz, the uh, view in through your, by your right, left shoulder there is good. We can see the acid engine cover, the Velcro on it. And uh, that's about all we can make out right now. Uh, we see the helmet still. We don't up. see anything loose up there. Well, great. Looks good to us. We see the helmet still in thing. inside the LEM cabin. Apollo 11, Houston, uh, we'd like you to read out the LCG reservoir uh, site level, over. We 
had a few uh, buzz of the utility light cord. Sure if you've, uh... Now, let me show you if you're looking the other way. Right. And we see uh, right now a uh, utility light or either a uh, floodlight uh, up there. I think now I see the uh, utility light still in the storage bay. Hey, that's a great shot right there. We see you in there. I guess that's uh, Neil and Mike. Better be, anyway. We see you waiting. Buzz Aldrin has apparently carried the camera into the limb with him, uh, showing as uh, Neil Armstrong and Mike Collins back in the CSM. 11 Houston, that's a really a beautiful shot. <laughs> 11 Houston, we didn't quite decipher that signal, it just came from the CMT. Houston, that's a real good view. We have the AOT. Uh, you're back now, Buzz. And notice you're taking now one of the window shades. Over. The light is superb. Yeah, how's the uh, sun coming in? How's the sun coming in from this direction going to uh, affect what you can see? It made it really super. Uh, the, the lighting is excellent in the in the limb right now. We can uh, make out the AOT, the ISA. And uh, the left-hand uh, window uh, is a little glare off of that, but uh, the LMP side, the, the with the shade down, it's really excellent. Over. Well, let's. Uh, I'm turned around. Why? Uh, I took the shade off my side first. Roger, we copy. The light level for the TV is really excellent. Over. Yeah, the lighting in the lamp is very nice now, just like completely daylight uh, and uh, everything is visible. Good bit lighter than the tunnel was earlier. Glad we had a good view now, Neil, of the uh, data and also of uh, buses uh, ACA. This uh, ingress to the lunar module came about uh, 40 minutes ahead of the flight plan, and we would presume that the unscheduled TV is perhaps merging hey, with the schedule a little bit, er now, a little bit early. Everything seems to be in place down there. Roger, we got the uh, dump valve uh, in view, over. Uh, Roger, and we're going to
Madeline Houston, we see you removing the ISA now, holding it up, putting it up by the uh, AOT. Yes, my families are coming in to view behind. Yeah, I think uh, probably the testing will be done next to you. I'm going to uh, put it back uh, over the instrument panel instead of putting it up over the uh, less on the recharge station. Would you care to comment on that one? We could do either just as easily. Stand by. We'll have an answer for you momentarily. Eleven, you said it's really a super shot of the main display. hand uh, resting on one of the portable life support systems which will be used on the moon's surface. Eleven, Houston, that's a good shot of uh, Neil's cliff there. Over. Houston, that moment, a moment ago, we had a good shot of uh, your Plus bus and the two helmet storage bags. And now behind your uh, left shoulder bus, we have the, the Dusky and the ACA. Well, we're not quite sure who's holding the camera at this point. Uh, apparently, it's uh, drifting freely inside the cabin. likely attached to some convenient point uh, within the lamp cabin.
This television transmission has now been running about 42 minutes. Uh, spacecraft now about 176,000 miles from Earth. Apollo 11 Houston, a uh, buzzer appears that you uh, did me to put on the sun filter and uh, viewing the sun through the AOC, over. Uh, yeah, unfortunately it looks like it's down a little bit uh, more towards plus X than I can be able to see in AOT. Roger. We got a beautiful view of the uh, side of the command module out of the AOT looking in the uh, left rear detent. Right. I can see the hatch and all the uh, all the EVA handrails. First time we've seen the uh, silvery outside of the command module. I can read the letters on the uh, hatch cover that say uh, boost cover uh, release and the big yellow arrow that points toward the uh, uh, opening uh, place where the tool B goes. Right. Great shot now, back down into the... And left, i Go ahead, Buzz, over. Say again. I'm just saying we got a great shot looking and back into the command module. Okay. Yeah, on the left detent, I can see the uh, AO, uh, the uh, rendezvous radar. And when I move to the forward detent, that's about all I've got. I'm looking eyeball to eyeball. Right. And Neil Armstrong has apparently been holding the camera, uh, looking back down through the tunnel, and it, it appears now that he's handed the camera to uh, Buzz Aldrin. Uh, this view is still looking back through the tunnel. We see Mike Collins in the background there. Houston, as far as the window shades go, and it's way on the nothing except for crew comfort. Uh, I don't think we got any systems problems. Be sure to put them back up when you egress over.
Houston, we have a good view out of the rendezvous uh, correction. The overhead one does a limb. We don't see anybody staring back at us, though, over.
This transmission's been running about uh, 54 minutes at this point. Eleven Houston, we can make out the markings on the panel. We read system A, acid fuel, acid oxidizer, quad one, quad four. The it's really unbelievable the definition we're getting down here off that little camera over. We can even see the barber pole on the dog back. We can read the markings on the instruments uh, for the glycol pressure, the quantity, PCO2. Even read the scale on the A ball, over. In Houston, we see the cross feed uh, barber pole, and we had the Velcro patches back up to the RCS systems now. We can see the markings on the uh, uh, meters, uh, green and red bands, in limits. See you raise the cover on the abort stage. We don't recommend that. Yeah, we're going to tape that one over. Right. We're going to tape that one over. We concur. The uh, restraints in here do a pretty good job of pulling my pants down. Roger. We haven't quite got that before the 50 million TV audience yet. Now, Levin, you said that's a good view of the eight ball. We see it getting ready to off flag there. See the signal strength meter for the radar, read the numbers on it. Take the color the down momentarily. We've run out of tape on the color and, uh, conversion recorder. Uh, we'll have the black and white for about five, but, five minutes while the tape changes in process and then continue to convert uh, in well, color after to that take, point. Uh, both of the 16 millimeter cameras back in the CSM and uh, test them there. Over. Stand by, bus. As an alternative to that, why we could wait until uh, LOI day and uh, to uh, left power. Roger, stand by. We'll have an answer. Eleven Houston on that TV. Uh, our commentary, the monitor I was looking at was uh, delayed about 12 seconds, 12 to 15 seconds, while it went through our color converter. Uh, it was probably, you thought I was crazy, but uh, we were looking at it 15 seconds after you broadcast it. 11, no, you... We understood that, Charlie. Okay, uh, on the LIM cameras, so we'd like you to do it on LOI day with the LIM power, over. Okay, that's what we'll do.
The black and white view that you're seeing now is the unconverted color picture as it uh, comes down from the spacecraft. Uh, the flicker, of course, is taken out in the conversion process. And we've now been uh, receiving television pictures from the spacecraft for about one hour. Uh, uh, checklist storage packet. Uh, it's got a 16 millimeter camera in it, and it's got this little cylinder, and uh, I guess, uh, I don't understand what it is. Maybe you can tell us. Roger, stand by. If we can't uh, figure it out either. It's got an arrow on the back and it says turn, but uh, I'm afraid to turn it. All right, 11, your friendly geologist says it's the camera crank, crank excuse me, for the 16 uh, sequence camera if it jams, over. All very well, thank you. The, the reference to the friendly geologist uh, refers to astronaut Jack Schmidt, who is here in the control center. There's that uh, word again, ancillary stowage container. Right. And we're back with the color. Out of shade, didn't quite hack it there, Buzz, over. when you're in TTC, over. Okay, thank you. Houston, Neil, at this attitude, you look like you're about 12 feet long. It seems like I always find myself upside down on whatever I'm doing around here.
ับHouston, our view of the, the Channel 11 is uh, gets brighter than darker. Are you, are you uh, changing the f-stop at all? Over. Now, what's happening is uh, we get pretty close to the window now and then, and it, uh, it drives the automatic light control uh, into the stop. I think. Uh, I think that's right. Yeah, I had to switch on outside while I was going through the uh, overhead window. That may uh, be what's contributing to some of it. Roger. Well, Gavin Houston, we seem to be picking up a few bit more dust particles now. We see them um, quite clearly in the 
Uh, screen now, over. Yeah, I'm joking on one every so often. Houston, uh, your show is going out to the U.S. now, and we're about to get the satellite up, and it'll be transmitted uh, to some other countries after that, over. Roger. I'm uh, checking out this window bracket uh, where I'll be putting it for the uh, EVA uh, pictures of meal going down the ladder. Roger. Eleven Houston, we keep marveling about the color and the clarity of the picture. Uh, it's really difficult to describe it, so it's just perfect. Over. And Eleven doesn't look like you're having too much trouble with that bracket up there, Buzz. I tell you, those uh, new knobs really uh, make it easy to twist the thing and uh, get it uh, cinched down quite tight. Houston, buzz out of the alignment, look there. Looks pretty good, as well as I can tell. Without the gear extended, I can't uh, uh, get a real definitive answer, but uh, you couldn't fix it to any place to see uh, much more out of the window without uh, hand-holding it for the whole time. Roger, it looks like to us it's going to work real well. Enough room to... Uh, yeah, I think so. in place there and uh, back up to the ISA now.
11 Houston, uh, Buzz, uh, you still looking for that 90 degree bracket over? Yeah, he is looking for it now. Uh, you will have a word for you in just a moment. My monitor shows a pretty good, uh, clear picture from this angle. Now we found the 90 degree bracket. Roger, Neil. Uh, it's uh, really a super picture. We got the ACA, your ACA, the, the good picture of the throttle, the 90 degree bracket. We see the uh, start, uh, your handles, and uh, now over to the bracket. That's about the position. Uh, we'll be putting the camera in after the initial descent down the ladder. And it'll be taking one frame a second for uh, most of the EVA. Houston copies out. That's a real good view of that camera. Our monitor is a little bit wavy, so it's uh, hard for us to tell when we're when we've got a steady picture for you. Eleven, we have no complaints at all. We don't see that waviness on our picture. It's just really great. Over. Do the edges of the window look like straight lines to you? That's affirmative. Okay, they they don't in our monitor and. Uh, that leads us to make some uh, corrections to the camera, which probably aren't required sometimes. 11, we have no complaints at all. It's a magnificent picture. Yeah. We've been receiving television now from the spacecraft for about an hour and 20 minutes. Apollo 11, presently 177,000 miles from Earth. What was that, Buzz, you're chasing now? That was, uh, that was me picking up some uh, particles of paint that were floating through the air in front of the camera there. Right, Neil, we got it. There's us at uh, Neil's about to check the Velcro map there. Okay, Buzz, we see the card up now. Okay, for those of you that don't know, this is where we uh, lock most of our data for each of the uh, land maneuvers. 
And uh, we have another card like this, it's the timeline book, that uh, we placed down on the table in front of the uh, data and display keyboard. And it's on this timeline that we have all our procedures. Now we obviously uh, have to hold these in place in zero G, so we make use of the Velcro patches on the back and on the table. So we can attach these down here. And then we just turn the pages over when we go to new sequences in our uh, timeline of procedures. Roger. And we're ready to copy the DOI pad. Well, we'll have the photos work that one up for you momentarily. In Houston, that was a good shot of panel two. Now we got panel three in view with the temp monitor switch, the stabilization and control panel we see now with the mode control switches. Now over to the right of the radar, real good. Eleven, that's real good uh, camera work. Probably the most unusual position a cameraman's ever hit, hanging by his toes uh, from a tunnel and taking the picture upside down. Roger, well, you're doing a super job. We got a uh, good view of the cross pointer there. We had a good view of the tape meter. We're giving you a picture now of the uh, floor of the cabin. I think you can see the uh, one of the two portable life support systems uh, backpacks here in the center. And on each side, we have the two uh, helmet visors. I'll remove one of them and show you uh, a little closer view of what this looks like. Roger. Inside the helmet visors are the EVA gloves with the blue tips. I'll not take those out now. Right, but that's a great shot now that we're getting of the helmet, of the EVA visor, and also the, the uh, EVA gloves in the background. Okay, you did say this was going out now, didn't you? Stand by, I think so. I love it, uh, you got a pretty big audience. It's live in the U.S., it's going live to Japan, Western Europe, and much of South America. Everybody reports very good color. Appreciate the great show.
Fellas, that was a good demonstration of your EVA uh, visor assembly. Appreciate it. That's a good view of Mr. Collins down there. We finally see him again. Hello there, Ensign. Hello there. In Houston, we noticed uh, when you were scanning over panel two a moment ago, one and two, the uh, two eight balls were slightly in disagreement. Uh, control said he'd like to uh, ag the line there. Yeah, one of them's ag, one of them things. Problem is, we don't know uh, whether to line eggs to pings or pings to eggs. Stand by. Eleven, Chris said he can tell you. What page are both? Nine. now that we have a view of Earth out the window. Eleven, 
Come on, Houston. If that's not the Earth, we're in trouble. That's the Earth, and we have a very good view of it today. There are a few more uh, cloud bands on than uh, yesterday when we beamed down to you, but uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful sight. And that description from Neil Armstrong. We have some horizontal banding in our TV monitor. Uh, are we transmitting that to you, or do you have a, a clear picture? Neil, we have a very clear picture. The only uh, thing that we see is a little white dot in the bottom of our screen, which uh, uh, is our TV guy say is a, an apparently a burned out spot in the camera, but it should come back over. Roger, uh, we have that in our monitor also. Eleven, Houston, we do have uh, three lines across our TV. I thought it was just a transmission problem, but uh, everybody's telling me now that it probably is, is on the downlink, over. Now, those are the same three ones that uh, we have. Okay. How far are you? out are we now, Charlie? Stand by, give you an exact figure. You can notice the difference between yesterday and today. This is as large an image as we can give you. Right, it's distinctly smaller. Uh, you're now 177,000 miles out, over. Right. That's uh, nautical miles. That's permanent. Eleven weeks. Go ahead, over. Eleven weeks. Eleven Houston, we see the uh, still see the banding along the intertropical uh, convergence. Uh, I guess the most predominant one as around the up in the around the equator or slightly uh, north of the equator. Yeah, that's the way it looks, Charlie. Same as yesterday. Right. Uh, keep Pacific Ocean nice and clear and calm on flat day. That's all we have. Houston, we had you, uh, your subspacecraft point is just off the western coast of South America, uh, directly south of, of about Mexico City, Owen. That, uh, that looks like what we observed from here.
and uh, we're going to turn our TV monitor off now uh, for a short bit while we have some other work to do. Uh, Apollo 11 signing off. Roger, 11. Thank you very much. That was one of the greatest shows we've ever seen. We sure appreciate it. Over. This is Apollo Control. That uh, television transmission uh, lasted about uh, one hour, 36 minutes, according to our first rough calculation. Uh, during that period of time, the spacecraft traveled something over 2,000 nautical miles. before you start clo closing the limb back up, over. Uh, we've got a little more work to do up there, uh, Charlie. We're going to make sure that we have everything transferred around and stowed the way we want to try to get a little bit ahead on tomorrow's timeline. I suppose that uh, we could be out of there in another uh, half hour or, or so if uh, it was necessary. Uh, Roger, Neil, we're not trying to push you, we're just trying to get an idea of, uh, about water dumps and uh, starting up the CTC again. Um, take your sweet time, over. Okay, uh, we'd like to uh, get a flight plan update uh, from you for the next couple hours here uh, when you uh, think what uh, the various constraints might be and what, what order you might like us to do things. Roger, stand by. We'll have that to you in a moment.
This is Apollo Control at uh, 56 hours, 51 minutes. Uh, Buzz Aldrin has now been in the lunar module for a little over an hour and uh, 13 minutes. Uh, we estimate that uh, Neil Armstrong has perhaps been in the uh, LEM uh, about 15 or 20 minutes less than that. Uh, due to the length of that television transmission, uh, the change of shift press conference has been canceled. The participants were unable to uh, wait for the uh, duration of the press conference uh, with other duties and uh, the press conference has been canceled at uh, 56 hours 52 minutes this is Apollo Control
Hello, Paul 11, Houston. Uh, Mike, we'd like to go ahead and do a wastewater dump. Uh, we'd like you to dump it all the way down to zero. Over. Roger, we copy that, Charlie. That didn't work, Charlie. Eleven Houston, did you call over? Oh, Roger, just noticed that the uh, mast that the EVA light is on is charred uh, brown. Uh, it looks as though it took quite a beating uh, during launch. Roger. The EVA light still does work. Roger, we'll uh, let this, uh, the stand guys look at this. We'll be back with you with our, uh, what we think, over. Okay. 